Good day. My name is Munir Ajan. I am the founder and CEO of Oruk Project Management. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about this very important topic to us because it's it's a foundation of what led us to actually start our company. Uh, and it's a hot topic that we always uh, see many posts online. And there's actually quite a bit of interesting discussion going on in the last two days. And I'm recording this in around, I forgot what the date today, around 20th January. Uh, or yeah, January, yes, it is 20 January 2024 now. So uh, what is the six component? What, for, what is the project management? methodology, what is the project management method, what is the framework, and there are many, many topics goes on and always debate and what is a methodology and what it's not a methodology. Uh, there is an interesting discussion by uh, my colleagues Trevor Nelson on, on the question is that, okay, we always say this is not a methodology, it's not a methodology, so what is the methodology? Uh, so we have, here we go. Now, we have recorded uh, this presentation or something similar like this in past discussion and, and some webinars. Uh, so it is good time to try to summarize the various topics in one place. So today, the focus is on defining what Munir Uruk view a project management methodology. However, I cannot just jump and give you that. If you like to jump, you can skip you know, a few minutes of this video, uh, but we need to build up uh, the process. So uh, here we go. A big discussion, we always consider project, uh, method and methodology are interchangeable topic. Uh, well, you can, nothing will prevent people from using these terms interchangeably. However, we need to understand that there is a bit of difference. So let's see what, what does it mean. When we talk about a method, uh, we often basically mean a method is something systematic uh, to do something, right? So basically I want to do X, I, I follow step one, two, three, I reach what I want. So it's a well-defined procedure or technique, technique to accomplish a particular task or solve a problem. A method typically involves steps or action followed in a specific order. You know, again, this is why sometimes a method could be a procedure or something like that. However, on the other side, a methodology is typically a set of methods, a study of method. Uh, it's a comprehensive approach that give us some guidance of how to build a method. And uh, there are many principles that, that goes into the process. Uh, so uh, obviously methodology is much bigger. And if we want to get into the more framework, framework is even more general and is looser kind of a definition. Uh, so that is just in general what we're saying is let's distinguish between a method that is very specific for a specific fit for purpose versus a methodology where it might be more a generalization of how, how to follow a method in project management. So when we talk about community or practice today, in our community, project management community, how do we, when you use the word method, what do we mean? Um, well, uh, I, I think one of the posts I actually posted yesterday on LinkedIn said, well, probably this term is one of the most used, abused, and misunderstood term that we in the community. Why? Because everybody uses the word method in a different way uh, to mean different things. Uh, like some people think, oh, every project must have a unique method uh, or every project manager have a unique method. Uh, the reality, uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense, uh, you know, obviously, so let's clarify. Well, on, on the left side of this, uh, of this illustration, what we have is that basically what, we, what some people call a method is typically an approach, a technique, and even when we use the word method and the name, that we use while managing a project. Uh, so basically there are numerous concepts and approaches that we use within a project that we call the method, critical task method, right? This is a method, it is a method, but it's very limited to the idea of defining the critical path on a project. Uh, when we use, uh, you know, there are forecasting method, you know, Oroch uses concept called the six steps of performance management, which means it leads typically to a forecast of a project. Uh, that is a method. Uh, there are steps. However, that is specific to forecasting a project. 
Uh, we can use method for defining, planning a project or identifying risk or managing risk. So there are a lot of specific technique, approaches, tool, uh, procedures, guidelines that we use within a project and we might call them method. Nothing wrong with that, just as long as you understand that these methods are usually limited in focus. Same thing, actually, I can generalize here when we talk about project management software. MS Project, for example. MS Project is, is a well-known solution, tool, that help us manage schedule, you know, plan, you know, define the schedule. And I mean, there are other functionality we can use with it. However, it's primarily about a scheduling project. So is it a project management software? Yes. Is it a project management method? No. I mean, in the idea of uh, does it define a, a, a full method? Uh, not necessarily. Again, depend on what your definition. So again, many people are on the left side of that equation. Other people, including us, including Munir, including Uruk, the approach we're using is that we, we use the term a method, or let me be clear here, we're not talking about development method or whatever. We're talking about a project management method. When I use those terms, it typically means the steps, the sequence, the process that will help us manage the entire project across the project lifecycle. And we'll show example later. So that is the Rook way. That is the Rook PM way of thinking. A PM method is there to find, to help us manage the entire project lifecycle. Again, nothing wrong with the term. You use it whether you are on the left side or the right side, as long as we understand that the left side are method we use within a project, where the other one is the method to manage the entire project. So what is the Uruk PM perspective, the Uruk way on this? And how does this evolve and how do we use that term? Well, if we look at Uruk project management approach, start with the methodology. In other words, a methodological process. So that is the general methodology concept, the set of method idea. And that is how we started back in 2007, obviously before Uruk existed. This is where uh, Munir and other colleagues within the company at that time, Sukad, uh, that we started in 2007, which led to something we call CAMP, or the customizable and adaptable methodology for managing project. Notice we use the term methodology on this, and I know when we were doing this, a lot of feedback, they told us, ah, you should use the word method. No, it is a methodology. Because once I use the word method, that means there is one method. This is here, we're talking about methodology, that means a set of method. So we have the concept of CAMP is that to define the methodological process that we outline. So when we developed CAMP, which led to many numerous videos, blog articles and books in those days, uh, and even workshop. And finally, uh, we reached version three of CAMP, you know, the, due to these various workshops and videos and the feedback we were getting, we were updating CAMP from version one to version two and version three, which we documented in the project management beyond waterfall and agile book, which was published almost exactly six months ago, uh, six years ago, sorry, December, 2027. So six years and one month. Uh, now, technically we can say Uruk PM is actually, we, when we started to work, to think about building the Uruk platform, we started with version three. Now that we have been working with the platform for a while, Technically, we can say the platform is really version four of CAMP, although really the, not, there isn't too much differences. There are some, uh, some subtle differences here and there, some terminology differences, and there are a couple of substantial differences. Uh, again, we are not uh, here to discuss the differences. We just wanted to show the historical perspective and how does this have been evolving. So, from methodology to method. The idea is that, okay, we develop CAMP as a methodological process with a standard model. There is, you will see later on uh, a standard model in some of our other videos, you will probably see what we call the standard model. So when we say the standard model, that means the model that we built, you know, when we defined initially CAMP. And however, we did not, remember, we did not call it a method because it wasn't set in stone. It's not one, one size fits all. 
So from that methodology, the, from the standard model, we can develop tailored methods. So we can tailor, customize, and adapt uh, the, the process to fit a specific case or fit for purpose as uh, we continue to explain. So each of these methods must consider various variables, uh, and uh, basically including you know, vector, sector, domain, industry, type, size, complexity, whatever you might want to call these variables. So that leaves us to, okay, RUPM view a PM method, a PM methodology as inclusive of six core components. What are they? So what we are saying here, every method, every method must include these six components. In order to call it a method per RUK, which means a project management method. I reiterate, I repeat myself just to emphasize the point. So a PM method should include these six core, core, core components. So what are they? A project life cycle. Again, this is adaptive, customizable. It could be three stages, it could be 10 stages. There have to be some kind of life cycle. How would we go from vision to reality? Vision to reality, right? So that whole concept. Now, project life cycle, obviously we're talking about the entire project. That means it's definitely more than one stage. So there could be phases or stages or both. Yeah, depend on what you term you like and how do you like to break down your project life cycle. A phase or a stage, the piece of that life cycle, usually focus on something specific. And then because we have to break the project life cycle into stages or phases, we have to manage a stage of the project. So we use what we call the stage management processes. Then every stage must deliver an output right, a product, a result of that stage, and that output must go through a decision point, which we call stage gate. Now, somebody would be looking at this and you wanna get ahead of yourself, said Munir, you know, you're talking about six components, there are only five here. Uh, I know how to count, so that's number six, is the supporting action. And the reason we put it in the middle here was touching every one of them, because, it, most likely it kind of touch on everyone. Uh, you know, because what is supporting action? As you probably have seen in other videos and you'll see here, we're talking about scope management, we're talking about cost management, we're talking about quality or risk. So when we make a decision, we must be considering risk, for example. When we're talking about stage, we need to manage the scope of that stage. Uh, when we talk about the output, the output might probably include the scope, the cost, the schedule. Uh, so there are different things. So we put it in the middle and touching on all these areas. So these are the six components of a project management method or methodology. Another way of viewing this is the following. You can see of project life cycle. So if we look at a time span, you have the project life cycle from, again, vision to reality, whatever that life cycle is. Uh, and you have stages, you know, that life cycle is divided into stages or phases. And then ideally we need to manage every stage. So we use a stage management and then we need to produce an output of every stage at the stage deliverable. And then we have the stage gates, right? So these are the five that I was talking about earlier, the life cycle, the stages, the stage management, the stage deliverable, the stage gate. Of course, now the time for the sixth part, the sixth component, which is the supporting action that we're talking about, the scope, cost, management, risk, quality, and so on. So this is what a life, what a project management should look, uh, sorry, a project management method should look like. If your project, what you call project management method, uh, and I'll, I'll touch on that, you know, in the last or slide or the one before the last, uh, is that always come back to this. Does this, whatever somebody talk about, ah, there is an X method. Uh, this is an X, you know, X is the greatest project management method that ever existed, right? Uh, it's gonna transform project management, whatever, right? 
uh, come back and say, does it have these six components? Okay, you will find that probably have two or three of them, maybe four of them, but does it have all six? Now, is it a must to have all six? Honestly, I thought about that a lot over the years, and I believe yes. Now, there are other things, of course, which we did not touch on. You know, the style of the project manager, the personality of the project manager, you know, the organization culture, is it more of a controlled type of people, you know, dictatorship or autocratic. Again, all of these has to deal more with the people aspect of how to manage project or the organizational cultural aspect. Uh, but regardless, uh, you know, uh, when it comes to the mechanics, when it comes to reality of what a project management method should be, regardless what type of environment you are in, it should have something like this. Now, of course, what we're saying is that something like this, that doesn't mean fixed set in stone, uh, right? It basically, it come back with the idea. This is, remember I was talking about the standard model of CAMP, that's the standard model. However, the idea is that from this model, we can modify. Let me just highlight a couple of item here. I'm not gonna go into the detail about every step here. Obviously, we need to start with a vision for the product, for the service, or whatever you want that project to give you at the end. Again, this is a project owner. If I am a contractor doing construction work or software development work for a client, I'm not gonna be, you know, my, my gate zero is, will be, you know, uh, on, in my company, it might be gate four or five from, the, from my project, uh, from my customer. So this is a project owner model, right? Uh, and it obviously could be used for a project contractor as well, but it has to be tailored and customized. So we start with gate zero. Remember, we include the early discovery phase on the project. We include the operational aspect of the project. And then uh, with this, what you see here on the screen, actually, I go back here. That is what we call, notice what the last, between seven and nine, what we call it. We call it PLC closure. This is a very important item. We are closing the PLC at gate nine, right? However, that doesn't mean the project is closed. In the Rook platform, when we reach gate nine on a model like this, the project will move from, uh, actually maybe a step back. In the Rook platform, where basically we have, when you start a project, uh, when you upload the project, remember the project set up, the project will go into a feature list. Now, everything is in one major database. However, you can sort based on this categorization. There will be future project. Once the sponsor activate the project, the project will go into the active project list. And uh, once we reach gate nine, the project will go into what we call the completed project list. Notice I'm saying the project is complete, but it's not closed. We have to go sometime in the future, we do a success assessment after project completion to assess the validity of the business case that did the project deliver to what was expected of it, right? And that could be done, you know, days, weeks, months, or years after the project is finished, depend on the nature of the project. And only then, when we do the final assessment, we consider the project closed and the project will move from the completed list to the closed list. So we start with the feature, active, completed, or closed. Of course, we have one more category there. Uh, it's not very relevant, but it's important to notice. In case we put the project on hold, if we terminate the project early, we did, so maybe we need to talk about that. If for some reason or another, a project is being terminated early, then we immediately, whatever we are at gate three or gate four or gate two, we jump to closure and we go and close it. So in that case, the project, you know, uh, gate nine or whatever that gate will be, uh, we will skip all the intermediate gate and we'll go straight to closure. And the project will be added to the closed project list. Uh, that is uh, uh, if we decide to terminate the project. However, sometimes there might be some reason where we decide to put the project on hold. In that case, we have a decision where that project will go back to the hold uh, and will stay there until a senior manager reactivated it again. So that is a special condition. So remember, this is a standard model, which means a tailored method could look totally different than this, right? 
and not only look different in this at the at the high level it's also the detail of every step uh, would be quite different which bring us to the idea of tailoring and tailoring is a must to respect our diversity in the way we practice project management so remember moving from methodology to method required tailoring customizing adapting configuring the method to fit to be a fit for purpose setting and how do we do that well here are a few things we consider when we build the tailored method uh, and uh, again remember we can build one for you as a client the project type sector which basically what we consider under the project type typically mean the sector the domain the category for example the sector could be oil and gas or capital project sorry um, uh, capital project for us and the platform so when you go to do the tailored method selection sector will come out first so usually capital project technology project academic project academic project this is will be more of what we call the sector then each sector will be broken down into domains for example under capital project you could have oil and gas renewable energy and that's what we call the domain uh, and the platform and then within those domain there could be categories so for example in oil and gas they could be offshore onshore there could be a new facility, a revamp facility, brownfield, greenfield, whatever that might be the case. Same thing in technology, we could have domain could be software, hardware, transformation, uh, whatever. Uh, there you could have as many categorization. Ideally, down the road, maybe two, three, four, five years in the future, we could have maybe hundreds of tailored methods built into the platform because there could be hundreds of scenarios, right? Uh, right now we have built about 40 or 50 and we can build some for you and we will move, we'll be able to adjust. So we first we need to define the type. Then we define the project classification, project class, size, complexity, degree of innovation. In this case, we combine them and Rook currently use four categories, four classes, micro project, uh, small, simple project, medium, moderate complexity and large complex. And sometime in the future, we will add the fifth one, which is mega project. Uh, it's too soon for that. Uh, so uh, these are the one. Now, what does it mean, micro project? Obviously, that have to be again tailored to you as an organization. You know, in oil and gas, a micro project could be two million dollars. In technology, a two million dollar project could be a mega project. Right? So, uh, well, not mega, maybe large and complex. Uh, so that that have the classification has to fit your uh, your need, and we can work with you uh, as a, a company on what would be considered the proper classification. Then we have to consider the development approach. Are we going to use for the development of the product? Remember, so we are dealing here now, we are focusing on when we reach implementation and we wanna develop the product, how are we gonna develop the product? Are we gonna use what some people call agile development, iterative incremental development? We're gonna develop the product into an iteration or an increment or, or both. Uh, or we're gonna use traditional, sequential, or what we might like to call Big Bang. Or are we going to use some kind of a blended approach that people call hybrid? Um, you know, in general, it depends on the nature of the project. Uh, I'll give you a quick example here, and I will be doing actually a case study on the Uruk, on the development of the Uruk initiative. Uh, maybe in a few months, I will have maybe an ebook and potentially maybe a presentation and videos on that. Uh, when we are developing the Uruk, the first time when we developed a proof of concept, you know, the first few months of development, that was a big bang. Right. So basically, I could not get access until the team, the development team, are actually giving me a product that I can test and use, and the, which is a proof of concept. So that was more of a big bang. Since that point, we've been doing iterative incremental. So every time we need to add a module, we actually design the first iteration, we build the first iteration, and then um, we could have many... Uh, 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 you know, we can update it, upgrade it, so we can have multiple iteration, or we build some functionalities, and then we later on add some more functionality and some more functionality. So it could be, again, it could be a blend. I don't like to use the word hybrid. I put it here because I know some people think that, you know, this is hybrid. I, I like to call it blended. Now, why this matters? Again, I'll go back to numbers, studies, and not by Uruk. Unfortunately, we're still new to market. Uh, we don't have our own case studies to demonstrate. I know from experience of multiple decades in the industry, 
I know this stuff works. Otherwise, I would not have dedicated almost uh, now seven, you know, 2007 to today, 17 years of my life, coming to maybe eight to 20 years of my life, dedicated to the study of methodologies and PM method. And now the last few years working on the Uru platform, developing the Uru platform. So if I don't believe that this is an actually a very powerful solution that could help organizations save billions of dollars, I would not invest my life and time into this. Actually, uh, some of you might know, uh, a few years ago, I was semi-retired and a bunch of my colleagues, people who've read my books, who've taken courses with me, they came back and said, Munir, we need to go, you know, take your ideas and put them into a digital solution. So I came out of semi-retirement uh, just basically to build this. So to me, this is uh, uh, the legacy of my life, probably of my career. And, uh, but again, uh, I'm not gonna convince you uh, with my word, uh, or by saying, trust me, it works, I'm gonna show you similar. And what's interesting about the data on the screen, this is based on the methodology as a concept. Now, what we have potentially, we could actually help clients achieve better results than this. Why? Because it's a digital solution, right? So the, everything is, in, you know, it, it can help it, uh, speed up the planning process, especially when we embed AI and it, it, you know, the Uru platform become, become an AI enabled platform. Uh, and basically uh, it be allow uh, people to use the, the platform and AI to accelerate the project planning, the project initiation, the project execution and implementation. And we can also use historical data uh, and there's community learning. There are a lot of great advantage, all of it within a digital solution that sit in the cloud above us and rain down on us with knowledge uh, and powerful tools. So here is these things, stagegate.com, obviously that company specialized into the principle. However, they have actually asked for an independent benchmarking for a third party to validate the principle of the stagegate model and they show these kind of results. Higher speed to market, which uh, debunk the idea that some people think the stage gate model is a bureaucratic slow process. Actually, it shows if you use it effectively, it can help increase the speed of your product development work. It increases your profit and increases the chance of achieving success on cost and schedule. The data from below, it's fixed from coming from capital project industry, from a book on bench, uh, from a benchmarking, multiple benchmarking studies summarized in capital project and clearly show the difference as well. Closing comments, two slides on this. That's why there will be, uh, so we often debate, and I, I started with my, my video with this idea. We often debate what is or is not a project management method or methodology. In this video, we share the six components of a project method, management method. Actually, it's very interesting, but I'm, I have done this presentation a few weeks ago, and but I haven't had a chance to record it until today. But yesterday, Trevor Nelson, my colleagues, and Bill Duncan commenting, and many other people are commenting on the idea on the concept of methodology. And Trevor's post was very really interesting. Uh, so probably look for link, uh, find Trevor on LinkedIn, October, I mean, sorry, January 19, I believe, or 18, and you'll probably find his post on this topic. And basically, he was raising the question, which is interesting, is that we often talk about what is not a method, what is not a method, what is the method? That's what we try to do here. A process covering the entire project, not a method limited in scope and use while managing a project, such as earned value management, critical path method, or the kind of concept. I think I elaborated quite a bit on this during the presentation, so I'm not gonna explain again. Uh, so that is one part. That brings us to the second question, which some might still have a lingering question said, what about or lingering question, what about waterfall, agile, Pombok, ISO, Prince2, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, I would say, you know, when you have these questions, go back, and I alluded to this earlier, go back to the six component. Does that offer you the six component, right? The Pombok guide is more of a, I know some people might not like that, you know, that terminology, is not a methodology. I will answer you on that one, right? It's a framework, it provides some guide. It's a general guideline of how to build a methodology. And ISO would be the same way. So I already answered on this, on these two items. Uh, I did not want to answer, but 
I think it's important to highlight. Uh, so yes, Pumba guide in a way nice. So they talk about life cycle, they talk about the stages, but doesn't give you the steps, the sequence, the process, right? So that is that why these are not method. Uh, Agile waterfall again. I have done many videos on this in the past, uh, but you know before you go and watch some of the links I share with you here, think about it yourself. What do you think? Right? Uh, if you like to more, we have few interesting playlists and each, and I call these are actually playlists. Uh, the It Depends series includes, I think, 10 or 11 videos, short videos, one to two minute videos about definition. So it includes definition of a method and methodology that I discussed in here, but would include something. What are the differences are usually, you know, somewhere between five and the 10 minute videos. They talk about, for example, what are the difference between quality and grade? What is the difference between X and Y? Some of it could include method and methodology, right? So that could be also some additional content there. And debunking the myths, I'm not gonna tell you the less of the, the, the full part because in a way I would have answered my first bullet is that uh, there are a series of videos. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, well, for, unfortunately or fortunately, you know, the, the, the it depends series, it was an old series we just refreshed so what you will see online today in our YouTube channel, probably the first three videos of it, but we are gradually adding the other videos. Uh, what are the differences in debunking the mess right now? They are there in the platform. There are many videos in there. Uh, these were recorded at least five or six years ago. So before Rook project management. So if you see Sukad or something, that would explain. So in general, this brings us toward the end. And uh, basically, uh, once again, uh, if you like to continue receiving these things, visit our website. Uh, what I did not, uh, I did not say in you know, our website, there is a tab called knowledge. You go there, you can find some links to our blog site, uh, podcast site, the YouTube channel. So if you are a visual, you would like to see things visually, obviously YouTube, if you like to read, you know, the blog, and of course the podcast is something we just released. Uh, so far we published three podcasts this year. Uh, so uh, some of these topics are, are, are produced in a podcast format as well. Uh, so if you, are, if you want to, to listen uh, and, uh, and enjoy, and of course uh, our link in uh, here page as well, it's there where we share, where we typically share these new publication and new videos and audios. With this, we say thank you uh, for your patience and listening to uh, 30 minutes. Uh, and uh, we wish you success today, tomorrow, and always.